Mom visits daughter in the morgue, discovers something unbelievable. Doctors declared Liz dead almost immediately after she was born. Her mother went to the morgue a few hours later, but what she discovered when she touched the small girl's hand was unbelievable. Fabian and Anelia were overjoyed. When they found out they were expecting their fifth child, a girl, they decided to call it quits and focus solely on raising their children. From the beginning of the pregnancy, there were no problems, and Anelia hoped it would stay that way. Unfortunately, things quickly deteriorated. She went into labor three months before her due date and was brought to the operating room for an emergency C-section. Nalia couldn't stop herself from panicking before she was given anesthesia. She'd heard of some premature newborns who didn't live to see their first birthday. Even still, she hoped hers wouldn't end up like that. Nature, on the other hand, had a different plan for her. There were no signs of life in the infant when the doctors brought her out. They declared the baby stillborn and rushed her away to the morgue in no time. However, they made a costly error there. None of them considered it was appropriate to allow the couple to meet the dead girl. All of them will come to regret how quickly they made this choice. The doctors informed the parents of the tragic news a few hours after the little girl's body was delivered to the mortuary. They cried uncontrollably because it was such a sad truth. It would have made a huge difference to Amelia if she had only had a minute or two and the child before she died. Sadly, the little girl walked away without saying hello or goodbye. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be inspired by these real-life stories on a daily basis. Now, let's return to the story. This was her parents' deepest regret. All the attempts to see the girl failed until 12 hours later. Analia and Fabian would be able to visit the morgue for one last time with their dead kid by then. The pair gathered their strength and walked hand in hand to the mortuary, fighting back tears to the best of their ability. They planned to simply speak beautiful words to the girl and express their gratitude for her presence in their lives. Even if they never met her in person, they promised to keep her in their minds at all times. It was going to be a tear-free, straightforward, and quick reunion. Analia took her sister's phone before they went to the morgue so she could take a picture of the baby for the funeral and keep it as a memory. When Analia arrived, she set up the camera while Fabian approached the coffin. He forced the lid open after taking a big breath, and there inside the casket was something they could have never imagined in a million years. Analia thought it was a joke. It was too expensive and that whoever was behind it needed to stop. But she saw the same thing when she looked again. Her eyes weren't deceiving her. She was actually breathing, and she even opened her eyes. When I moved the lid to the side, I saw a small hand. I touched it with five fingers before uncovering her face. Then I heard a small scream. I told myself that I was hallucinating. Then I took a step back. I noticed that she had awoken. It was as though she was saying, You've come for me, Mommy. Analia said that Fabian was also starstruck, but all he kept saying was, It's my imagination. It's all in my head. But it wasn't the case. The little girl was still alive. But how had she managed to stay alive for 12 hours without any medical help? Her parents were shocked. However, they were still too confused to feel angry or ask any questions. They were simply grateful that God had recently returned their daughter to them. They were forced to mourn their loss, but now they have a chance to love and cherish this girl. Fabian jumped into action, grabbing the girl from her sobbing mother and sprinting as quickly as she could to the hospital. He yelled at the top of his lungs when he arrived at the new natal unit, pleading with someone to save his child. He felt like he was carrying a bottle of ice in his arms because the child was freezing. The hospital soon became chaotic. The news had reached everyone. So how did this blunder occur in the first place? A group of doctors had previously confirmed the girl's death. How could not a single one of them see any signs of life in her? Worse, why was she taken to the morgue without the approval of her parents? There were a lot of questions, and the doctors didn't know how to answer them. The couple claims that the delivery process was unprofessional right after the girl was born. She was rushed off to the morgue 20 minutes after, and Neely was given her daughter's death certificate. She should have been carrying her baby in her arms, whether dead or alive, but not holding some weird piece of paper. Now all the anger she had buried came back in a rush. Why wasn't she given the chance to be with her baby before she was taken away? My baby was born at 10.24, and at 11.05 she was already in a coffin. She froze for 12 hours in the morgue, she said. I saw the frost on her body. The case was reported to the appropriate authorities by the couple.
They conducted a thorough study into the hospital's operations. In the end, all the workers involved in the case were put on leave while more questions were asked. However, the hospital's director claimed Liz had no vitals upon birth. On how she survived at the morgue, the doctor said the cold temperatures must have altered her metabolism and helped her survive. Originally supposed to be named Lucia Analia, and Fabian named the daughter Luz Milagros, which literally means miracle light. Over the next few days, Luz's health improved. Understandably, her parents took her elsewhere as they didn't want her treated in the health center where she had been wrongly declared as dead. She stayed in the hospital for 10 weeks and received intensive care before she was allowed to go home. Although her health improved, the doctors warned the family that she would need constant medical attention because of how fragile she was. For the next eight months, things went well. But while everyone would have wished for it to continue that way, it did not. Two months after celebrating her first birthday, just like the first time, Anelia held her baby in her arms and ran to the hospital. The only difference was the girl was alive then, but now it seemed she was ready to say bye. When she arrived at the hospital, little Luz immediately went into cardiac arrest. Tragically, the doctors couldn't save her and she passed away. The hospital secretary of health said she died of multi-organ failure and disseminated intravascular coagulation, which then led to shock. Before her death, she had developmental problems and was diagnosed with mitocephaly. Annalie and Fabian tried to raise funds to travel to China with their daughter so she could get stem cell treatment there. However, doctors never approved of the trip because loose health was delicate. Unfortunately, this decision led to her death. It's sad that despite how the girl fought, her parents lost her not only once, but twice. Although heartbreaking, her parents are glad that they had a chance to be with her for a year. Now, in their memories, she was a happy girl, a survivor who defied the odds. They wouldn't have been able to say all this if she had died the first time. But now, if given a book to write her biography, sure, there would be no empty pages. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone else who might enjoy it as well. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.